Jared Culver may be the best player in the draft this year. Make sure you check out, if you haven't already, my scouting reports on Zion, Ja, and R.J. Barrett, and the full written report on Jared Culver uh, on lineups. I'll make sure it's pinned to this video. Let's take an in-depth look at Culver, why I think he might have, actually, the highest ceiling in this draft, why I think he projects to be pretty similar to a guy like Paul George. Make sure you follow on Twitter at Brian. A whole lot more goodies coming soon. Let's dive into the film first and foremost. Biggest things that stick out about Jarrett is his ability to create his own shot pretty much at any time. This was a possession that was going nowhere. 30 seconds of the shot clock all ran off. He gets it at the end of the clock. Tight man defense. He's able to get a little shake, a little wiggle, get his own shot off deep behind the line. And he has a really, really solid stroke both off the dribble and spot up. He has step backs. He has a great follow through, great fluid high release, great rotation on his shot. Even though he didn't shoot the ball high, high percentage from college, I think his shot translates really, really well to the NBA. The way he releases the ball, the way he jumps straight up, straight down, his follow through, all those things. Remember, college threes with a pretty small sample size of only 30 or so games and only a few shots a game. There's a lot of guys who didn't shoot it great from the college three, like Kawhi, who ended up shooting it really, really well from the NBA three. I think Culver will be no exception. You saw him hitting those shots off the dribble. In addition to that, he definitely can catch and shoot, even off tough passes. He has great form, great balance, and again, great follow-through. I broke down a guy like R.J. Barrett's shot form. You can find up top where he's a lot more inconsistent with his footwork, a lot more inconsistent with his release. Culver, for the most part, is straight up, straight down. Great follow-through. And I think his shot, again, is going to translate really, really well to the NBA 3 and be really consistent. It's just going to take reps, but he's put in that time. He improved tremendously from being a three-star recruit and more than anybody in the country from his freshman to sophomore year. I like betting on a guy like that. In addition, I really, really like that he kind of has mid-post, back-to-the-basket game. That's a skill set that R.J. Barrett doesn't really have that Culver will be able to take advantage of in the NBA. He has great patience. You see him when he catches the ball in the mid post. He has, does a great job waiting for things to clear out, making sure he has room to go. And then on top of it, he has great NBA-style footwork. You see this pivot to open up, face up, and then he's going to spin off, kind of like the Greek freak does frequently to get to the basket in that fashion. On top of it, even though he's 6'7", he just plays bigger than that. He's got a big frame. He's got really long hands. He's got a really good command of the ball. You see, again, the patience to catch. He has really good, solid footwork. Has really, really been trained really well and at a really high level. You see him against Barrett right here. In addition, the other thing, as I mentioned, that I really like, he can get his shot from the mid-range, the mid-post, from the elbows. He's able to pull up on a dime, shoot over guys. Again, with that high release, just with that big body. To me, even though he might only be listed at 6'7", he looks like a guy that maybe can grow a little more or that will be playing kind of around that 6'9 size in the NBA where he can slide easily to the 3, to the 4, kind of like a PG, a little bit like a Jimmy Butler. On top of that, like I said, he also has really advanced footwork and he can drive either direction. A th uh, thing I pointed out about both RJ and Zion, both of them, Really, really, really strong left-hand dominance. Culver prefers to go right, but he's able to attack gaps either way. Usually the ball's going to end up back in his right hand to finish, but he can drive it really, really well with both hands. Very ambidextrous, a lot more than either of those guys, again, who are very left-hand dominant at this time. You see, again, the NBA-style footwork. A lot of the NBA is being able to take your guy off a closeout, off a face-up. You see the strong jab, step, and go. Get by to the left again, finish through the contact at the rim. Here he is again. You see again the triple threat footwork, the face-up game, the jab step. These are all NBA-style ways of creating space that he has really, really developed well technically. Again, driving left, finishing left hand that time, able to get by his man that way. A lot of people talk about the national championship game. Yes, did DeAndre Hunter outperform him for most of the game? Sure. But you know how many games over the course of a season uh, Damian Lillard or DeMar DeRozan might outperform Steph Curry? Doesn't mean they're better players from a one-game sample size. 
And again, we talk about narrative. If this had been the game-winning basket, this great spin move with 40 seconds left, the finish with his left hand over Hunter, I think we'd remember it a little bit differently. He's able to get rebounds, to push the pace, to handle himself, and again, is a good, solid pick-and-roll player who loves to absorb contact and still get to the rim, get to the free-throw line, getting to his preferred right hand. On top of that, he's a good long defender, but then once again, he's able to really push it, handle it with both hands, spin, has great touch around the rim, and above the rim finisher. High basketball IQ too. You see him really on plays like this. This was a design slip out for him to get a right hand drive. Look at him kind of just fake it all the way through. He's going to keep the ball high, fake that pass. His eyes are going to look at it, he's setting up with his feet that he's coming off the screen, but instead as the slip comes, just going to rip it through strong to his right hand, get all the way to the rim with a nice running hook to finish. Again, the ability to play out of these top ISOs and create his own shot. This is, again, the Rosen-like, Kawhi-like, Paul George-like, Jimmy Butler, guys who can face up, create their own shot, one-on-one, -on -one, isolation game, a strong right-hand drive to draw free throws there. And as I mentioned once again, his feel for the game is really, really impressive to me. Able to handle off pick and rolls, able to spin his way to the basket. Nice long reach, really good command of the basketball. Going either direction. You see again, here the strong rip through. He's going to rip the ball through left to right. Oh, get by his man. Strong reach and finish at the basket. And there we see again the ability to go either way off the pick and rolls. I think he'll be a pretty decent pick and roll creator at the next level, kind of like how Philly uses Jimmy Butler now. You see him able to hesitate, go by, all the way to his left, finish with the right hand. And then here we see the feel of the game again. He's getting iced in this pick and roll. Does a good job accepting the ice, ripping through to get his man off him a little bit, forcing the second defender come up right here and once he sees that getting his man in the air creating that dump off pass a high level creator on top of being a scorer himself take a look at this pass down the stretch even though he didn't get the shot off in time look at the ability to find that pass to find that shooter from behind the basket you see these are the passes that DeMar makes a lot honestly for the Spurs when he played point guard this season look at that reach to be up in the air like that and extend the ball out all the way and whip it on a dime to a shooter. That's a high level pass. And then again, the feel for the game, the setup, the vet gamesmanship. A lot of the game is basketball IQ. So you see here, setting up the side pick and roll, watch him plant hard with his left foot to drop towards the baseline as that makes Hunter react to that, get him off him a little bit. Then when he comes off the side pick and roll, he's reading the trap. Great pocket pass. Lead his big man to the rim. Here we see him play off a step-up screen. Again, does a great job engaging the big, reading where the help comes in, but still finding a way to get that pocket pass again to create another dunk. Here we see another one of those hang time passes. This has DeRozan written all over it. How many times do you see him draw three, four defenders at the rim? Harden even does this a lot too. Draw the defense in, drive and kick. Great zip pass to the corner, on time and on target. Then defensively, I see a guy with a really good NBA frame, really good awareness, really good hands. You see here, he's playing in between these two. On the pass out, he does a great job, stunning to the shooter, but also staying in the passing lane. So when they try to make that extra pass to the corner, he's able to come up with the steal. Big time steals, guys. You watch him right here this time. As the play is going to go away from him, does a great job still seeing the basketball, seeing his man. So when the pass is made to the roller, he's going to go over, get his hands in there. Great physical stance, low center of gravity. And again, as the ball goes away from him, has good awareness, seeing the basketball, staying in between, being in a good stance, mucking things up. 
And he's going to recover right out here to a contest. Very solid discipline. On top of that, like I said, he can block shots too. You see he gets it with the left hand again here. That's something that stuck out to me a lot. You see a lot of his blocks, a lot of his shots, the left hand as well as the right. Seems, you know, a lot of guys are ambidextrous. Not a lot of guys. R.J. Barrett, like we said, even says he's right-handed, but he plays almost all with his left. Culver really, really uses both hands to come up with big, high IQ, athletic plays like that. Watch the awareness on this one as they're going to run an after-timeout play to try to bring the shooter that Culver is guarding through this closed door. But watch as Culver recognizes that he's going to run right into this elevator and get screened if he tries to go through the middle. He's going to shoot over the top and end up miraculously coming up with a huge block. Great high effort defender. Here we see they're going to try to get him with the hardened step back. Not only is he going to be able to close to contest, he's going to close to block the shot before it even gets released pretty much. You see again in a good low stance. Jumping a little too much. Has some things you can clean up. But as the ball again pulls away from him here, does a great job once again being in the paint, trying to affect shots as the defense flies around and rotates. Somebody ends up wide open under the rim. Watch this. Left hand again with the strong block. Really flies around. Really old school athlete. But just looks like a basketball player. Kind of know it when you see it type thing. Jarrett Culver might not have the highest ceiling, but I think you look at him in five years, he may very well be the most established player in this draft. The guy with the potential to be an all-NBA type player year after year with a skill set that compares again to guys like Paul George, Kawhi Leonard. Make sure you check out the write-up that's pinned to this video. Make sure you follow on Twitter at ScoutBrian. Please make sure you thumb up, hit that subscribe button. Thanks very much for watching. A lot more draft content and NBA Finals content coming soon.